Okay. Hey, look up now. So um, I have to correct your physics lab report. Mostly good. Uh, there's some small things though that need to be fixed for the next lab report. So I'll give you some feedback on it individually. Okay. Uh, but there's small things which everybody's making a mistake with. So firstly, if you have a diagram, it must be your own diagram. You can't take something from the internet. So I think I said that to some people last time. Pictures and stuff like that. Pictures not allowed. You have to draw your own diagram. Okay? Can you do it? No. 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 Well, it was only for explaining, I guess it's okay, but you still need a diagram to show the equipment arrangement. Okay? Yes? No. No. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. I do it Fine. Fine. What you work through. Um, that's okay, but if it's your own picture, but I won't give you as many marks as if you did a diagram. That's fine. That's fine. I the, the other thing is, a lot of people forgot to label the I and the OR in their diagram. You're one of them, Tanish? I think so. So, this is my advice. You should always, to help you remember, you should always have two diagrams. The first diagram is just the equipment arrangement, you know, where you put the oh. uh, instrument. And the second diagram should be the theory diagram, you know, where you have the I and the OR and what you're measuring. You could put both on the same diagram, but it's clearer if you separate them. Okay? These are only small problems. They really are only small problems. The other thing is, I think the report looks much nicer if the text is justified. Okay? So if you can justify the text for the next one. And some people's font was too big. Don't don't give me big font, please. It looks stupid. Mm -hmm. So give me the normal size font, okay? Well, you're saying that you're not so fussy, don't you? Yeah, not so fussy, but it just yeah. looks stupid. So there's a limit. Twelve. Arial twelve. Oh, but no, not Arial twelve. Times New Roman twelve. Yeah, Arial twelve is too big. No, no. Times New Roman twelve. Yes. Yes. What? 14 is? That's like a section title. That's a, no, 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 no. 14 is too big. Did you do yours in 14? Yeah. Yeah. 14. The difference is like less than a minute. Yeah. You can tell. You can always tell. I make the title in 15. <laughs> 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 Tone it down. Too big. Anyway, um, what we're going to look at today is more about vocabulary for labs, okay? So there's a lot of notes for today. So uh, take your pen and paper. Let me just <coughs> let me just put this in. Monday. Yes. Yes. I'll talk about that at the end. No, no, focus now. Come on. Tanish Tower. Yeah. What's wrong? He doesn't believe what? All right. Okay. So what we're going to look at now: uncertainty and error. Can we pay attention to you? So, first, um, some definition of vocabulary, okay? So, when we measure, we know we do not get the true value. So you know when you measure something, you don't get the true value. 
the actual value. Because, huh? How can we calculate the error? Well, that's what we'll look at today, yeah. That's what we're going to do today, how to calculate that. Yeah. For labs 2, 3, and 4. So we know we don't get the true value. <coughs> and um, we deal with two big problems in this. The first one is called the problem of accuracy. What is the problem? I've been interrupted a few times now and I haven't really started. What's wrong? Do we have a question? I don't know what she's Just focus here. Next time I stop, whoever makes me stop, they're leaving. Got it? Okay. So we're dealing with two problems here. Uh, first problem is a problem of accuracy and the second problem is a problem of precision. So I need to explain what each of those words mean. So these are problems that cause us not to get the true value. So problem of accuracy and problem of precision. Okay. So since this is quite important, <coughs> I want to type the definition up so you can clearly see what it is, okay, rather than handwrite it. Um, okay, so the first one, can you see this okay? Yeah. We'll go tau font, uh, we'll go tannish font size, 14, yeah? 16. 16, uh, no, that's not go crazy. Um, okay, can you see that okay? So, uh, accuracy first. So accuracy tells us how close we are to the true answer, okay? So accuracy is a measure of how close we are to the true answer. If something is accurate, then we know um, um, we are near what the true value is. So, an example, the one, <coughs> what you need to uh, picture here is um, if we throw many darts at a dart board and most of them are near the center. We say we are accurate. I know, I had a look at her notes, so it's great. I know, and both of us probably got this from the same website when we looked it up for images online. So, yes, You're, and, you, and when you go to university next year, you too will get the same definition, probably with the dartboard as well, okay? But this is a good thing. Uh, so that's accuracy. All right, well then, since you've told me you've seen it already, uh, using the same example with the dartboard maybe, what can we say about precision or precise? How close the values are to each other. Yeah, how close the values are to each other. And that to each other is the critical piece. So, something is precise if, if, if the value... Oh, oh, oh. If the values are close to each other. And here I think I need this in bold. Now I put I put that in bold and italics and everything because it's really critical. Something is precise if the values are close to each other but not necessarily near the true value. So something can be precise but it can also be inaccurate. So if I go with the example of the dartboard, uh, so if we throw many darts at a dartboard and most of them are close together, 
but they all land on the floor. Um, we say we are precise. But here we are not accurate. So if you think about it, this is me, you know, and I'm throwing darts, and most of the darts all land up very close together here, but not on the dartboard. So I'm precise. I can always get my darts close together, but I'm not accurate because I'm nowhere near the true the target. Okay. So it's great that you've seen this with the rain as well and the dartboard example. So that's accuracy and precision then. Um, there's some more vocabulary to do, and some of it I know you haven't done better, and what you definitely haven't done are the calculations of uncertainty. Yes? Yeah. No, well, not, I don't think. Have you done the ones with the square roots in them? No, no so yes. Yeah. There's more advanced ones here for our formulas, okay? Alright. So. Actually, let me, put to, uh, let me put together a little table here. So on the top, <coughs> high accuracy, low accuracy, and then we'll do a high precision, and then a low precision. So uh, what I want to do in this table now to help us understand the idea, and we can do this together is I want an instrument for each of the four possibilities. So let me do something, uh, the easy one first maybe. Can you think of an instrument you use in your labs which is highly precise and highly accurate? In the physics ones. In, the, in our physics labs we have done one, two, three, and four. No. 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 Yes. Yeah. The photo gates, the speed gates. Because they're very accurate. I think they gave you two decimal places, didn't they? And they're very precise. So with all the pieces of equipment, this for me is the most accurate and the most precise. So in the high accuracy, high precision, we'll go for the photo gates. Well, yeah, this is the problem with the other ones then, yeah. So, like, for example, we'll go for the next one. Uh, let's go with... Um, let's go with maybe another one. Uh, let's go with the worst one then. Low accuracy and low precision. Is the... Well, I'd say the smell. The, the refraction tank. Yeah, because the water shakes. <coughs> so that causes a low... Uh, Precision. Oh yeah, well this is all compared to the other equipment, you know, like the snell law compared to the photo gate is there's oh, a different yeah, quality. Uh, when I calculated the uh, the end, the the the, uh, the percentage error yeah. was one percent. Oh I know. And you know, that's kind of we can do much better in physics than that than one percent. Yeah, but still that's uh, oh, I know. Um, you think that's going to be better than the stopwatch? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the stopwatch in a bit. I don't think it's as bad as you think so. And we'll talk about that in a moment, okay? Uh, I'm going to put down the refraction tank down here. Well, which one? Well, if we go on to all these terms, don't worry. Um, low accuracy, high precision. So low accuracy, that means we're not near the true answer, uh, but high precision means, uh, yes, stopwatch. Uh, with the stopwatch, there's an error with the stop and the start, which means we're always away a little bit from the true answer. But it's highly precise because you get a, a, an accurate time, but it's just always a little bit off. So yes, the stopwatch here would be one. 
No, no, this is just explaining the term. Lastly, high accuracy, low precision. Well, for me, it's the voltmeter or the ammeter. Uh, and the reason is they are accurate. I mean, they are near the true value. But the problem that you notice is the values are changing a little bit. So they're accurate, but they're not so precise. Okay? Right, that's great. Okay. Uh, some more vocabulary now. <coughs> Expected value. So this is another term. Does anyone know this term? Have you done this one? Expected value? No, actually. And you would think from the use of English that it should be that, the, the value in the literature. It's not actually. So, so there is, is this the value that, like, let's say for the um, refractive appendix, we were expecting to get 1.33? It should be that, but if I'm, I'm being a bit more strict with my definition, but it should be that, yes. But I would call that the true value. The expected value here is the value you get if you did the experiment an infinite number of times. Which, if you're doing it right, should approach the true value. I actually, I'm not going to say experiment because it's really the measurement. It's more conceptual. As Tal was saying, the expected value basically is the value in the, the book. So, how can't you put that in your book? Yes, you could, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just being a bit stricter with the definitions here. Expected value is like the long run infinite value you, sh you would achieve. So, we're not really using the word expected value? No, no, you could. In, 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 in so we're more still using we're still trying to think of this as mathematical definition yeah mean value mean value average the average value yeah the stopwatch was a good example um, but mean just means average here Okay. Okay. And you have this idea that the mean value should roughly equal the expected value. You know, there shouldn't be too much of a difference. If you did lots of measurements and got the average, it should be roughly equal to the expected value. Okay. Now, I know you did um, this word with Lorraine. Um, systematic error. Haven't you? Yeah, so what's a systematic error? Yeah. So systematic error is an error that is made in each measurement. And so I think the example maybe she did with you was with the thermometer, or did you do something else? You should say that if there's a problem with the equipment. If there's a problem with the equipment, yeah. An example would be, for example, if you're um, uh, weighing scales is not set to zero at the start. You know the way with weighing scales sometimes you have a little dial and before you start you should move the dial to make sure it's at zero. 
Oh, I'll give you another example that you do know. Uh, when you did Snell's Law, you have to make sure the zero is up the top. Now, the good news for you is that you have a screw at the back. So you'll always get the zero at the top. But if you didn't have that screw, then you have to make sure the zero is at the top. If it wasn't at the top, you'll be making an error each time. Yeah? Tanish question? No? Okay, so that's a systematic error. Uh, do you remember what the next one is then? Because they usually go together in pairs. Yeah, what's a random error? What is it? Well, a random error is sometimes we can't do anything about it. Yeah, we call it... Um, yeah, it is also known as noise. Uh, and like a natural error, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's something that we can't really control. Um, it is the small error with each measurement we make that we have no control over, really. Now, I put the really in there because you can always do better. It's just difficult with random errors because, as you said, Joshua, maybe it's particles in the water. So then what could you do? Well, you could get, um, what's, oh, what's it called? The, um, uh, oh, what's it called? The, the special water they use in the chemistry lab. Distilled water, yeah. You could get something like this, you know. Um, but what's really important, and again, I'll put this part in bold, on average, the sorry, the average random error should be zero. That's really important. It's only a random error if sometimes it makes it too big and sometimes it makes it too small. If it always makes it too big or always makes it too small, then that's a systematic error. A random yeah. error should always be a plus or a minus. Uh, if it's not, then it's not a random error. So the average random error should be zero. On average, it should be zero. Sometimes a plus, sometimes a minus. Sometimes big, sometimes small. But it averages to zero. Okay. Right. <coughs> So now we're on to uncertainty, now that we talked a bit about errors. Yes, well for me, I'm looking at these as uh, mathematical. So human error for me could be systematic or it could be random. So an example would be if you read the machine incorrectly each time, that's a systematic error. If each time you do the experiment, your hand's shaking or you're doing something like this, then that would be a random error. A human error, it's just, uh, it would fall into one of those two categories for me. So I can put it in, it could be in here or here, depending on the nature of the error. Most human errors, I think, are systematic. Like you don't use the machine correctly and you have a mistake each time. Would you say so? I don't really picture many human errors being random. Um, uh, and since we're talking about human errors, I'll give you a piece of vocabulary here. Outlier. And do you know this one? A value that is much bigger or smaller um, um, than it should be. So this is where I think uh, we can say more about a human error. So the person does something really stupid and then they get a really big value or a really small value. This is normally caused by <coughs> human error. So you know when you're drawing your graph and you had one point that was really far away from the graph, that's called an outlier point. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Comparing. Okay. Now what do we know about uncertainty? 
Do we know the definition? Something to do with equipment, that's for sure, yes. Go for it. You have an earring? No? Plus or minus. It was a plus or minus, yeah. No. Oh, so, is this a word that's new or not? We know whether the media are expressed in white. Yes. The reason that Kind of, yes. Okay, so I'll tell you now. Uncertainty is by how much our estimate could be wrong or how much of uh, uh, an error um, no, I don't want to say error. Uncertainty is how much our estimate could be wrong. Estimate or measurement. You can use it in both situations. It is always a plus minus number. And there are specific formulas for it, and that's what we'll move on to next. Yes. If we didn't use this formula in the first lab report. No, but in the first lab report, you're not supposed to use the formula. You need it for labs two, three, and four. The first lab report is really just getting you started, uh, getting you right in, just making sure you got uh, no big issues. Uh, everybody's lab report has looked really good. And I can give you advice on how to improve it next time. So I'm happy with the lab report. It's in lab 2, 3, and 4 where we have to get more technical. So that's why I'm doing this now. You don't need it for lab 1. You need it for 2, 3, and 4. Are we better than people from 3 and Uh, no. You're the same. Sorry to tell you this. Uh, okay. So. What symbol do you use for uncertainty? Do you use a yeah, what do you use? Yeah, now the different books and different notes will use different letters. But for me, what I do is use, um, here I'll get this up here. I'll use U with a little X, and this would be the uncertainty for X. So for example, I would have X plus or minus UX. So for example, one meter plus or minus one centimeter. So this is my measurement, this is what I measure, and then this is my uncertainty. Okay. So let's go back with the example of the meter stick. So can we picture I have one meter by one meter, and it's exactly one meter by one meter. If I measure, will I measure one meter? Well, maybe, maybe not. It depends how carefully I measure. So what do you feel like would be the type of values I would get if I'm measuring one meter? Maybe I get 99 centimeters, yeah? Maybe 101? So what I'll do is I'll do some examples of different measurements. So let me just have it here. So this, we'll do um, 10 measurements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And... Um, what is it? Random zero one, isn't it? No, oops. Or is it just rand in? You have the delete everything. You'll have it on the left. Here, shouldn't I? No, no. Delete everything. You'll Start again. No, yeah. Rand. No oh, random function. Let's get it here. Random between. Yeah. Alright, so um, we can be off. We'll go. Yeah, well, hang on. This will just make. And I'll just divide this by 100. Uh, uh, and. Hold on. Too small. There we go. One plus. All right. So now six centimeters. Uh, 
it was too big of an error. There we go. I'm just trying to make some realistic measurements. Yeah, there we go. So these are measurements I make on the X. And then I'll make some measurements on the Y. Okay. And this is the area. Now, if it is one meter by one meter, what should the area be? It should be one meter. So let's see what we get if I multiply these. So sometimes I get one, sometimes I get more than one. The uncertainty here is how much uh, we can be above or below. And the uncertainty here is the same and the uncertainty here is the same. So let's have a look at for x. So I know the true answer should be 1. So let's look at the, uh, what you might, the, we'll say the, I'll just call it delta x for the moment, equals 1 minus this number. So here I was too small, too big, too small, too big, and so on. But let me just say I care about the size and not the... One is the true value. Okay, let me just get the average here. Now, do you see that number there? That's 0 0.004. That is, on average, how much of a mistake I made each time with X. Can you see that? So here's X. What should X be each time? It should be 1. And you see here, delta x is what I just called the difference. If I average all those numbers, I get 0 0.004. In our head, this is what we picture as the uncertainty for x. It's on average the mistake I'm making. Okay. Now, I'll do the same thing for y, but it should be the same, because it's the same ruler. So if I just copy this over... So this is delta y... You see, it is about the same. Just the F column to the G. It's, now it's just the same for Y. Now tell me, what do you think about the area? If area is not going to be 1, there's a mistake each time, do you think the area, the uncertainty, will be related to these two? Of course it will. But how will it be related? Yes. Yeah, and the formulas will update when I do. Yeah. How will we feel the formulas, uh, the uncertainty will be related to these two numbers? Will they be multiplied? Will they be added? Maybe you average them. Well, let's have a look. So if I do the same thing again now, but for area. So delta A. You see, that number looks like it's roughly these two numbers added together. And this is the idea I'm trying to get you here for the first one. That if you measure something with X, and then you measure something again with Y, well actually before we do that one, let's just do adding them together. If you have X, and then you measure something with Y, and this has an uncertainty X, and this has an uncertainty Y, well then the total will have uncertainty X plus Y. But what about if I subtract them? So this is uh, my first example. My second one. Um, what about if I have something like here X, and then here I measure Y, and then I do X minus Y. What's the uncertainty here? No, in fact, it's still plus. Now, if you go back to the ESAP lesson with Stephen, uh, there was an example like this that he did with you. But what I'm trying to get you to appreciate is uncertainty always adds, no matter what the situation. Okay? So that's the key rule I'm getting you here. Yeah, well, let's have a look at an example, okay? So let's say, tell the fir uh, sorry, Tanish, the first measurement is 2 metres, and the uncertainty is 1 centimetre. 
and let's say y is 1 meter and the uncertainty is 1 centimeter. What's x minus y? Uh, sorry, 1, isn't it? If this is too big and this uh, is uh, too big, in other words, what's the biggest this could be? Well, it could have been 2.01, right? Because the uncertainty is 1 centimeter. So maybe the true value is 2.01. And maybe the true value here is 0 0.99. What's that difference? That's 1.02. Maybe here I'm too, uh, maybe it's smaller, maybe it's 1.99, and maybe here it's bigger. What's the difference here? 0 0.98. You see, in other words, another way of thinking about uncertainty is how much of a mistake could I be making? So in the X, I think it's 2, but maybe it's 2.01, or maybe it's 1.99. And in the Y, maybe it's 1 or maybe it's 1.01, or maybe it's 0 0.99. In other words, it's still, you know, unclear. The uncertainty doesn't go away. It should not be zero. You don't mind them. They, it's still, the answer at the end is still, has some flexibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the important point is, uh, uncertainty, Uh, this is really important. Always adds. Now, if I go back here, I said that this looks like it's roughly these two added together, but it's not exactly. And the reason for that is in this example here, what we have is x multiply y, and we have area equals x times y. So what's the uncertainty in the area? Well, we think it's roughly the uncertainty in x plus the uncertainty in y. But in a moment, we'll do a formula to work out the exact. It has a square, it has a square and a square root in it, yeah. It's a lot like Pythagoras in its form, yeah. Now, it's not a big deal, in fact. Even if you did use this formula, it's still pretty good. So, even as an approximation, it's good, okay? We do a, I mean, the uncertainty, um, uncertainty in the area. Huh? They will Which ones? Oh, no, the uncertainties don't cancel here. Because, as you just recalled a moment ago, uncertainty always adds. So whenever you're making repeated measurements and things are getting calculated, uncertainty adds up. 0 0.5 plus plus or minus 0 0.5. No, no, it will be plus or minus uh, 0 0.005 plus 0 0.004 or whatever. That's what I mean by the always add. This is how we combine them. Okay, going on. Okay, so just, uh, if I go back to my table here. Well, no, I'll go back then. I'll just go here. Uh, we'll take something like uh, a stopwatch. So how can I get the uncertainty for a stopwatch? Well, the uncertainty for a stopwatch, we just have to guess it. That's all we can do. We, uh, what do, they, what do you think? When you press stop and start, how much of an error do you think that is? How much uncertainty do you think that is? Yeah, I think it's at about a quarter of a second. But the good news is, because you do this ten times, the uncertainty or the, the error of the quarter of a second is shared between all ten measurements. So here we estimate it. That's how we get it. We just estimate. Guys, come on, now focus. I want to get this finished and there's not much time left. And I will run over if I need to. Okay? Next, stopwatch. Okay. What about a meter stick or something like this? Yeah, but my, my question is how can we get it for an instrument like a meter stick? Yeah, well, in other words, it's half of the smallest reason. 
So whatever you see, whatever you feel like is the smallest number you can read on it, it's half of this number. So for the meter stick, what's the uncertainty? Maybe like half a centimeter or a quarter of a centimeter, or something like this. These are all just conventions. They're not strict rules. Okay. Now what about something like the voltmeter? Yeah. Yeah, it's half the max minus the min. So when it's changing, you do half the biggest minus the smallest. And then the last one here, um, oh no, that's just the tray I want to do for that one. Okay. So just a couple of more definitions here, and then we will be finished. Relative, relative uncertainty equals the uncertainty divided by um, the estimate or the mean value. That's called the relative uncertainty. It's the uncertainty divided by the mean. This is also called the mm -hmm. fractional uncertainty. It's another name for it. The mean value of the average. average of, look at your oh, whatever it is you're measuring. So, for example, with the meter stick, how many measurements of the meter stick did you uh, make? Eight. Eight. So it's the average length for those eight. So add up all the different lengths you use and divide it by how many there are. 10 then. No, 9. You did 9. Oh, was it 10? Okay, what well, does it matter? It doesn't matter. Whatever. Divide it then. Okay. And then the last thing here, and then we'll do the formula. Relative error is the true value uh, minus the estimated value. Well, in other words, it's the difference as a percentage over the true value multiply 100 percent in other words it's the, mis uh, the difference between what you think the value is and what the value is in the book the literature value so what I think sorry yeah well the, the, no. the estimated value is your results from the lab experiment I, if you want I should really hear maybe say mean value or something Okay. Uh, for the yep. Of the meter. Yep. Of what? Of a meter? 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Well, no, no, look here with the meter stick. I know it goes up in centimeters, but I also know each centimeter is subdivided into millimeters. But I don't feel like you can measure to a millimeter. That's too small. But I do know each centimeter is split in half. So probably the most reliable reading you could make with a meter stick is half a centimeter. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So the uncertainty will be half of that. So 0 0.0025. Yes, sorry. Zero, I just said 0 0.005. Yes, the 0 0.0025. Will be the uncertainty. Half of half a centimeter. Yeah, you could read off half a centimeter on a meter stick because each centimeter is split in half as well. Uh, it's also goes to millimeters, but I don't think you can read millimeters off a meter stick. It's too small. Yeah. Okay, now time for the formula. So, suppose you have something you want to measure. Um, so we have something like t equals 2 pi root l over g. So we can rewrite that as t squared equals 4 pi squared l over g. So we get g equals 
4 pi squared L over T squared. But there is a problem. The problem is here there's uncertainty and then here there's uncertainty as well. Uncertainty in the time squared. So then my question is what's the uncertainty in your estimate for G? So the way this formula works is like this. When you have a formula with lots of measurements in it and you want to combine the uncertainties, the combination goes like this. Um, we do the fractional uncertainty in G. So that's the uncertainty in G divided by our value for G, which I'll just put a little line on the top. Our estimate for G. That's equal to square root the uncertainty in L divided by L um, squared. Sorry, not squared. Sorry, sorry. What am I saying? All of this squared and value here. What is G? This is the value from our experiment, our predict, our estimate value. So you know when you draw your table, it's basically the average for G. Uh, just before I go on, what I'll do is I'll write this formula as powers. 4 pi squared L power 1 T power minus 2. How about you just let me finish this and then we can deal with it, okay? Plus. And then uh, here I have... Um, uncertainty in T all over average value for T all squared. And the 2 is coming from the power here. So in other words, if you want to think about the formula like this, it's 1 UL over L average all squared and the reason for the 1 is because the L has a 1 and then plus because it's always plus for uncertainty 2 and the reason for the 2 is the 2 here and you might say well why not minus 2 well fine you can use minus 2 it doesn't matter because you're going to square it anyways so it doesn't matter and this is the uncertainty in G over the average value in G now, as you're saying, Joshua, you want some numbers in here to get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we looking for? We're looking for this. So, we have uncertainty in G equals average G value times square root UL squared over L squared plus 4 UT squared over average of T squared. Right. So, let's put some numbers in. What type of value do you think you'd get for G? You'd probably get something like, let's say, 9.82. Just making this up, okay? 9.82. When you did the experiment. What did we say the uncertainty in the meter stick was? Well, we were talking about that earlier, Joshua. It's half of half a centimeter, isn't it? So 0 0.0025. What's the average length of the meter stick? Well, I don't know, but it's going to be roughly about 0.5 of a meter because we're changing it. So it should be about 0.5. Okay. Now, what's the average error for the time? Well, we said it's a quarter of a second, but it's for 10 measurements, so divide by 10. And what's the average value for time? Well, you don't have the number, but I think it's going to be around about this. Can you type all of this in on the calculator and tell me what you get, please? Come on, just type it in and tell me what you get. Who's 
this. Hey, you are talking there? Yeah. Wait a minute, relax. Come on, come on. Be quiet, I'm trying to finish here now. Right, what number did you got? 0.349. Yeah, 0.349. So what we can say is we think the value of G will be 9.82 plus or minus 0.34. Is it 3.45? 3.45. Okay, so 9.82 plus or minus 0.4. Yes? What did you get? 0 0.3 or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what we're saying now is we think G will equal 9.82 plus or minus 0 0.395 meters per second squared. Now the reason that might seem a bit big is because we're just making up numbers into this, okay? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Before you go, there's some small questions here for you to do. No questions you can answer them from the notes, okay? But you really need to do this to make sure you understand the vocabulary and most importantly, there's a calculation just like the one I did at the end here. Except I have more parts to it, okay? I am going to collect this in the next class. You can write the answer at the back, but I'm going to collect. No, 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 no. Right now, what you're thinking is, I want to get some C. Stop talking, C. La, 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 la. So I actually need you to listen to me before you go. I'm giving you these questions to do. Write the answers on the back because I will take it from you in the next class. Yeah, did you all understand that? Yeah. yeah. Right, take it, go. Yeah. I, I really, I have another class I have to run to. Can you keep it for the next one? Or? Just, right, go on, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, um, every measurement has a circle. Huh? Don't calculate what? Yeah? Oh, yes, you do. Anything that has anything that the measurement has an uncertainty. What? Oh no 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 because this this is really really pushing it to just like this. You have one. Email me the question. Oh yeah, you're a You have You're not, you don't think Happy Joshua with an uncertainty is our idea, is it? But look, it's just anything that the measurement has an uncertainty. It's as simple as that. If you measure, you're uncertain. No measurement, has no, no measurement is perfect. That's the point. Thank <laughs> you.